Hi Fresties, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I have an exciting announcement. I made a Notion, Notion template. template. You may have seen this video, this video, never can I remember which side of the screen it's on, where basically I took you through my Notion template for how I plan a story and keep things organized. Basically how I use Notion as a replacement for Scrivener. Now, if you haven't seen that video before, feel free to go watch it, but honestly, it's not really that necessary. There might be a few things in it that could be helpful, but I think pretty much everything that I covered in that video, this is the updated version. I have streamlined the template, I have fleshed it out a little bit, and not only that, but I also have it for sale up on my Ko-Fi if you guys would like a writing template to just help you stay organized. But there's no pressure to buy it. This video is going to walk you through each page of the Notion, so if you just want to recreate it yourself, that's easy to do. But if you're looking for a time saver or you just want to help support the channel, the link will be in the description. It's going to be three dollars. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's take a gander at all the pages on the template and see how it can help you guys streamline your writing process, keep things organized. Oh, I also want to mention, before I forget, this template does work for series or a singular book. You can customize it however you want. You'll see. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is the first main page of the template, starting off with series info. Obviously, if you're not writing a series, you can just change this to book info and it'll work just the same. We'll get into what these are in a minute, but for now, I'll just read this paragraph to you. There are paragraphs throughout the Notion template just explaining what each page is for. That way, if you wanna reuse it for several books, you'll have the basic description for the purpose of each page. So like it says, this page serves as a wiki for your books or series, a hub for all of the basic information about your characters and settings. You can decorate it with anything you'd like, your book covers, aesthetics and mood boards, a header or icon that relates to your books, any of that kind of stuff. For instance, the examples I've used throughout this template are based on a made up series set on a dairy farm, so you'll see a lot of decor related to that. If you're not familiar with Notion, all of this is very customizable. You can change these icons that I have set here to anything you want. You can change this header, uh, and what's really cool about Notion is that it's connected to the website Unsplash, which hosts copyright free images. So you can search a keyword for whatever relates to your book. You know, if you're writing a book set in New York, you can just type in New York and bam, you've got tons of options to use for your header. And you can go to the characters page or the settings page through these links here, or this is my preferred method is to open up the sidebar and go through there. So this is the main page for keeping your characters organized. Like it says, this is where I keep track of the basics, mostly physical descriptions of all my characters. I personally don't keep the more internal details here like character flaws that are important to the story or plot. And I also don't mention why side characters are important to the main character's journey, stuff like that. I would write more about these things in the story outline. This area is for me, just a nice organized list that I can take a quick glance at during writing if I forget a certain character's age, hair color, etc. But feel free to use it however you see fit. So I like to subdivide this into main characters and side characters just to keep it a little more organized. Um, and I have set up an example for you under the main characters tab, which is a character whose name is Paul Barry. And this is just the basic list for descriptions that I like to use. I feel like it covers a good amount of the basics. Again, mostly just appearance based, but with a few traits as well, just in case I need to brush up on a character's personality. If I haven't written them in a while, they haven't shown up in the story in a while, that would probably be more useful for the side characters, which there is a separate tab for, but just so you never forget anything. So you have easy access to these details that you might forget. You can check back in here and make sure you're getting everything that you need to get down. Back in the series info page, we also have the settings tab, which if you click here, you can see I wrote that this is the main page for all your settings pages, which list brief descriptions and important details about each location in your series. You can divide this into subsections as well if you have one larger location with several smaller locations inside of it. For example, a farm that has a house, a barn, and a pasture. We'll get more into examples of that in a second. And you can also add images to look at whenever you need a description reference while writing. These can be images you find online of a place that matches your setting or a drawing you've done, house or apartment plans, etc. If you've watched my previous video, then you'll know that something I personally like to do is build the rooms or houses in The Sims and then just take a screen cap of it and put it in Notion. And I just don't have to think 
too hard about it when I'm in the middle of writing. I can just take a glance at that image and I'm good to go. Anyways, my setting for this goes from describing the biggest setting, for example, the farm, and then one of the small settings within it, the house, and finally the smaller details of that setting, like the bedrooms, the kitchen, the living room, etc., if necessary. So to simplify that down, we do the big setting first, then we list any of the smaller settings, and then any of the even smaller settings within those smaller settings. So our example here is Berry Farm, which what I like to do is create a bulleted list of brief descriptions, basically things you can see, touch, hear, feel, or taste at the location. So you can see here, I've included images that just help inspire writing for this particular setting. And then again, we have a list of descriptions and down here we have more links and you can also open those in the sidebar. So if you wanna go into the smaller setting, which again, for example, would be the house, it's basically the same thing, just for a different setting. Uh, and then you have even smaller settings within this tab that you can check back into. So it just keeps it really nice and organized and you don't have to be searching in a Google doc like I have previously been of just a bunch of massive details and you know, you're control effing for something and you can't find it and it's really frustrating. This just makes it really simple to keep things organized. You know where everything is and you don't have to pause when you're writing and go hunting for something. And again, in this uh, biggest setting of Berry Farm, you not only have the house, but you also have the barn. So you can create as many subsections in each subsection that you want to. So that covers it for the series info or book info page. And now we're going down here to the details of book one, which if this is just a singular project for you would just be your book title. So you can see we have four sections here, which I'll get into in a minute. I personally like to decorate this page with my book cover and any mood boards I've created for the story. So I just put these little placeholders here for you that you can go in and replace if you would like to, which obviously you would probably either delete or replace them. I don't think anybody will be keeping these in there. Uh, so this is the main page for your book. If you're writing a series, this will be for book one. Like I said, I like to decorate mine with my book cover and any mood boards I've created for the story and the main characters. I also like to embed a link to my Spotify playlist of songs that I think go well with the story. Anything that relates to the book and gets you in the right mood to write, just put it here. But of course, this page can be as decorated and detailed as you'd like, or just simple with links to the other pages. That's one thing that I really like about Notion. You can get as decorative as you want, or you can just keep it super simple, the bare minimum. You don't even have to have any icons or any headers. If you want it to just be white page with black text, that is totally fine and it works just as well. I just like to, I, the decorations kind of help me get in the writing mood. So as you can see in our sub list here, we have the research tab and the first thing in this list is the task list, which I just keep as a list of things that I need to research for my book. So I put a little example list here and then the subsections of this are the research topics. So here you can compile a list of information on your topic. This can be anything you find helpful. Links to articles, pictures, infographics, screenshots of some random comment on a Reddit thread that just happened to have the answer you were looking for. Anything that you might need later, store it here so you don't have to go hunting for it again and interrupt the writing flow. So again, just like with the others, you can put as many sub pages in this research tab as you'd like. And if you're anything like me, uh, you will probably have quite a few because writing a book takes a lot of research. <laughs> After that, we have the outlines tab. This is where your story outlines go. Whatever kind of outline you prefer, save the cat, romancing the beat, three act story structure, etc. Some authors also like to use scene cards, which you could create here. I personally like to use a story outline and then a chapter by chapter outline where I write down exactly what is going to happen in each chapter. Whichever method you like, this is the place for it. So just for an example, I have set up a save the cat page. For example, if you like the save the cat online, you would write it out all out here. And then I also have created a chapter by chapter folder. Um, but these, if you don't want these, you can just delete them or just change them to, you know, three act story structure, whatever, you, good spelling, <laughs> whichever method you prefer, that's what would go in these tabs. Next, we have the manuscript tab, which is where your manuscript goes. 
Personally, I like to write in Google Docs one document for each chapter and embed the documents into their matching Notion pages. So I create extra pages for each chapter. Uh, if you have one long manuscript doc, you could just embed it right onto this page. Or if you want, you can write on Notion to simplify the process. Or you could write in another program entirely and just use this template as a wiki. Whatever you prefer is fine. <laughs> Again, like I said, this uh, template is very adaptable. You can personalize it however you like. Um, I have gone ahead and explained how to embed the Google Docs document if that's your preferred method as it is mine. And just note that if you switch between desktop and mobile like I do, you will probably want to not only embed the Google Doc directly through Google Docs, but you will probably also want to embed it through Drive because for some reason, uh, writing on Docs through Notion does not work on mobile, but if you embed it through Drive, it works just fine. You can just click on that and it'll take you right to the Doc. I explained also how to do this in my previous video, so if you need a little bit more of a walkthrough, I think that one covers it a little bit better. And last but not least, we have the notes page. I have a section for your blurb. Uh, also, if you would prefer to keep this on the main page, I feel like that would make sense too. I couldn't exactly decide where to put it, but I kind of like to have mine in a separate little place just because it's something that while I'm writing, I usually come back and edit quite a few times. So I kind of like it to have a designated area. Uh, then we also have dialogue and scene ideas. This is a no pressure area for you to jot down any dialogue and scene ideas that pop into your head. If you don't know where to put them in the story or outline yet, or if you even want to use them at all, that's okay. Just keep them here and come back to them later. And lastly, we have the edits page, which I use as a space to store the bits I need to work on when I'm editing. So if you're in the middle of writing and realize you need to go back and change something, like a character's name or something they said in a previous chapter, or maybe you need to add an entire scene or introduce a side character way earlier than you have, whatever it is, if you don't want to interrupt your writing flow and take care of it now, just jot it down here and then you can take care of it later when you're editing the manuscript. So that covers it for all the pages. Uh, I have gone ahead and duplicated the book one example just to show you how it would look for a multi-book series. Um, this is just the same thing, just instead of book one, it's book two, but everything inside of it is exactly the same and you can duplicate this and edit it as many times as you want. If you have a three book series or a 70 book series, it doesn't matter, <laughs> it's gonna work. And like I said, also, if this is just one book, works just the same as well. So that's the template. Let me know what you guys think. Again, like I said, if you do want to buy it, it does help me out, but there's no pressure to, and you could easily just follow along with this video while you're in Notion and build this template on your own. Let me know if you guys find it helpful. And if you would like more Notion templates for me in the future, I would love to create more. It's just a matter of like, obviously I don't just want to create ones that are already out there in the universe and I'm just recreating things that already exist and I want them to be useful for you. So yeah, I really hope that you find it helpful and useful and that again, you get just a lot of use out of it because this is like my preferred method for writing all my books now. So hopefully you guys feel the same way. All right, I have rambled on long enough and I will see you guys in the next one, hopefully. Is Naked Froggy in front? Oh my gosh, he's not. Hi, Fresties. He was here the whole time. I want that on the record.